Hello everybody, my name is Eric and today we're going to be taking a look at the ground.exe virus. Now this virus is profoundly weird. Did I spell it wrong? Yes. I hate Linux case sensitivity so much. Now this virus, unlike many of the ones we see on here, is highly detected. But it's very interesting because it does some really weird things. So here is the file. Now, it's not that big, and this version has got a fake installer icon, but that does seem to vary. Now, this virus causes some really mysterious effects. It's, it has a compile date of 2010, although I can't verify whether that was faked or not, and it is a real virus. Now, by virus, I mean it does actually infect files, but the creepiest thing it does and after we run this and ignore every possible warning, and then deal with the fact that Windows Defender is a rootkit because I disabled absolutely everything in it and it came back, but okay. Wait. Oh, so it did run. Now if you notice, this new file was actually the NVIDIA driver I downloaded for this VM, but it's 500, it's the same size and the same file. So it keeps the icon, and that's why there's different versions. Uh, like, one person had it uh, with the icon of Dark Souls 3, and that led to some people in the Microsoft forums thinking that it was a, a Dark Souls virus. Now, if we upload this or any of its infected files onto VirusTotal, we can get an idea of what this is. Grenam seems to be the most common name for this file, but we've got a couple others. Yeah, it's malicious. And this one does get a subtle difference from the ground.exe. So now let's see about if we have any pictures anywhere. It also seems to get the desktop background after a reboot. The ground just sits there in the background. It hasn't gotten this image yet, but it probably will. And it actually, uh, the other thing is antivirus will offer to clean the file, but this doesn't usually seem to work. But it do does actually have the file hidden under this, you see this G here. So what it does is it creates a hidden file, and we should, if we go to File Explorer Options, we show hidden files, we should be able to find the real version. So that's extremely weird. Uh, the main effect this would have is that if you try to send someone an EXE from your computer, just they, they will get a virus, which is how I believe this is still spreading. It seems to mostly be spreading in the game modding and piracy community. My assumption as to why is people are just copying files from their computer to another person's and not realizing that it's been replaced by the virus. This virus has no internet connectivity and was compiled in 2011. It's detected by every antivirus, but of course a lot of people turn off antivirus. This is a wonderful example of why even a bad antivirus like Windows Defender is still much better than turning it off for a placebo performance scan. Now I'm going to reboot and we're going to see what else happens. Now the VM took a bit longer to reboot, which had me really worried because I was worried that it had done something to the Looking Glass client, which would have uh, broken this whole setup, but it hasn't. Let's see when ground.exe comes. Now it's not done in a stealthy manner. If you go to startup items, you can actually find it. And Windows Defender, despite being disabled in every possible way, does keep detecting it. And it, this time it's classifying as a worm as well. Now, you would think the way you'd remove this would just be quite simple. You just go disable on this. And if you catch it early, that's true. Now, the problem, the real problem here is that this file will slowly replace every single exe on the system. And once it's replaced another one of your startup files, uh, you're now in serious trouble. How long that takes isn't necessarily defined, and the PNG replacing functionality seems to be super glitchy, so I'm just going to find a Google image of what happens, and then I'm going to... Because I've actually reversed this quite a bit, so I'm going to show you the code in a minute, so we can prove that this is... Uh, so this is what it does. You see that right at the very bottom here, that I am sorry exclamation mark. And it does this on every single thing. Now there is a different thing called the I am sorry ransomware, which is actually ransomware, but that's a different file. I am sorry, exclamation mark. It infected all of my JPEG files and wrote down each picture. I am sorry. It's such a weird thing to do. In fact, it's stupid because if it didn't do that, you would never know it was there. Of course, if it didn't do that, it would also be harmless. 
And if it didn't impact EXCs, I would genuinely just assume it was some sort of prankware. But it's not prankware if it's intending to spread. And I looked all throughout the internet, and there's really nothing written about this. I think I'm the first person to actually do any sort of reverse engineering on it. So now I'm going to go to the other VM where we do that, and I'm going to show you some more of the secrets of ground.exe. Now we're going to open up the binary ninja database. Now I made this database. Uh, first of all, I used a really difficult to install but good program called IDR, which is Interactive Delphi Reconstructor, and I was able to... It doesn't decompile, it doesn't get you like the original source code, but it gets you the symbols, because Delphi programs do compile with more information than the average C program, so you can port that back in and you can get reasonably comprehensible code. Now the other thing I had to do, uh, because one of the weird things that happened is Binary Ninja, we can find this blob of data right here, actually misrecognized this whole blob of data as a function, but I was able to fix that by just going delete function, and now we've got all of this data. It's funny, but remember that blobs of bytes can actually be either executable code or data, and disassemblers will usually assume if it's in an executable region of memory that it's code. Uh, you can sometimes tell this if you see a bunch of disassembly that says byte add, that's quite likely to be bytes that just don't make a lot of sense as assembly, so you should always just check. And here we find the I am sorry text, and we find these extensions. So here we are comparing whatever is stored, and this is also not the best representation. This is a struct, but Binary Ninja doesn't recognize this to my understanding because it's a negative offset. So we've got a register here, the EBP register, and then we've got a bunch of stuff stored around it. So minus 4, minus 24, so that's going to be the file extension, which we can see is going to be extracted from, I guess, the file handle here. Now, if this, which seems to set EAX... Now, that's the unfortunate thing with Delphi in Dissemblers, is it doesn't always catch the operations, but we can pretty easily figure out that this is setting EAX. We can say, okay, so if EAX equals zero, which on string compare means the string is the same, uh, this function is going to be called, and we know this is the file, and here we've got bitmap one, then we're loading a picture, and then we can see something quite interesting. This one's on a bitmap. So, we do user32 draw text, so this is the Windows API function onto this canvas, which we can see is being defined from the picture. It writes, I am sorry, exclamation park, and it puts it here. Why does it do this? I don't know. You don't know? I don't think anyone knows. That's, it's just super weird. Now, what about the exe overriding functionality? Well, let's just go find that. So here we've got some code that looks like it's enumerating the file system. This is going to check for exes, and then this seems to get called on each hit in this loop. Once again, the memory handling of Delphi is just a bit different than what disassemblers accept, expect, but you can really you can make it out what's going on. So we're getting these file names, file paths, and if we find the right things, we can go and we overwrite, so we, we move this file, we put an N on it, then we get our current executable name, and we copy that, and we overwrite the file. But there is some code here to keep the icon, so that then the infected file, and that's really all that seems to happen. We can look at what's imported, and we can see there's no way for this to communicate with the outside world. There's no cryptography functions. It's just a really strange kind of troll virus. Another weird thing that I've seen before in Delphi programs is instead of saying this program must be run under, or cannot be run under MS-DOS mode, it instead says in this portion of the header, this program must be run under Win32. It has the same effect, but I've only ever seen that in Delphi programs. So, that is going to be all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video, did you find it interesting, and what you think of these weird classic malware. That's all from me for now. Bye!